a null reference exception is so common, so widespread, that it has become a cliche in the world of programming. And I guarantee you, at some point in the near future, if you haven't already, you will experience this error. But in order to fix a null reference error, we have to understand what's going on. And here I have the most simple example. We're going to start very simple and we are going to gradually get more complex. Here I have two perfect variables. There's absolutely nothing wrong with these variables. If you were to put these inside of Visual Studio Code and run them, everything would work out fine. But if I were to change these, if I were for some reason to put null within this variable, if I were to put null within here, you would get the red squiggly line of death because these are value types. These are simple types. We cannot physically in no way have null for these values. And the reason our previous variables can never be null is because they are simple. A bool, an int, is a very simple type. Therefore, it is stored on the stack. It is a value type. And a null is a representation of the heap. A null means that nothing is being stored on the heap. If you were to look inside of the computer memory, all you would see is zeros. And since value types can never be stored on the heap, they can never be null. But where things start to get more complex is when we start talking about objects, strings, things that are actually designed to be stored on the heap. And the code that you see here will absolutely run. A string is definitely allowed to be null, but you're going to get all types of yellow squiggly lines and annoying warnings that are going to drive you crazy. And what we're going to do is we're going to hop inside VS Code. I'm going to show you what all of these symbols mean and show you how to handle all of these crazy squiggly lines. So let's go ahead, let's hop inside VS Code and let's do some coding. So first things first, let's start off with a value type, a very simple type, a integer. And what we'll do is we'll just go ahead, put zero within our value type. Everything's all fine, hunky dory. But what if we go into here and we put null inside of it? What you are going to get is you're going to get a red squiggly line. Your code is not going to run. How do we fix this? What are some ways that we can combat this? Well, these are kind of sketchy. I'm not going to lie. If you have a null within a value type, I would kind of dig deeper into why there's a null where a value type should be. If your code's giving you a red squiggly line, that means something is very wrong. But we can fix this. There is absolutely a way that we can fix this. What we can do is we can put the question mark. The question mark is going to give the value type the ability to be null. And what's going to happen is underneath this, C Sharp is going to do all types of crazy things to allow you to do this. It's not going to put the value on the heap. It's just going to do all types of fancy weird things underneath the hood to give you the ability to actually make a value type a null type, which I think is pretty cool. But where things are going to get more interesting is when we try to assign null to strings, complex types, objects. And I'm just going to put a value two here and give it just a test variable name. And I'm going to go ahead and put a string in here. And as you can see, nothing's wrong. I have some unnecessary assignments right here, but that's not really related to null. So we're good to go. But where things are going to start getting crazy is if I put null within this string. And as you can see here, you're going to get the dreaded converting null literal gibberish inside of the actual VS code. And the way that we can combat this is two ways. We can put a bang operator. A bang operator is going to say, shut up, I don't wanna hear it, I don't care, turn it off. And you can absolutely do that, but just like saying that out loud or doing that a lot, you could imagine if you tell the compiler to shut up you know, so many times, it probably means something is very wrong. So use the bang operator very liber lib liberally. But if you want to do things the right way, the way that you should probably do them, you're going to put a question mark. And the question mark is going to allow the compiler to have a null. And it's going to also shut up the yellow squiggly line. And this basically means that you know that it's null, it should be null, and that it is still going to provide some type of type checking while the bang operator is going to just totally turn everything off. But we can't just stop there. What if we want to do something like this? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to console.writeline here, and what I'm going to do is try to reach inside of this value two here and try to get the length of this string. 
and what you're going to see is another null reference error and what you can absolutely do is you can pop on another question mark and you're good to go but things this we're getting carried away here we're, we're doing a lot of question marking here this doesn't feel right what do we do and what we can do is we can provide null checking in the form of logic and what this means is that all we do is create an if statement put our value inside of here just like this and we can use this fancy syntax called is not and we can check for null and if the actual value is null it is going to skip the code and watch this you can go inside of here get rid of this we can go ahead and put this down here and I'll go ahead and delete this because we don't need this anymore and as you can see the IntelliSense or VS code is going to pick up on it and is indeed going to make that yellow squiggly line away because the value in here cannot be null we just provide a form of null checking but what I just did there is a lot of lines of code we can actually do it in one line of code with what's called a null coalescing operator and instead of having all of the four lines up above we can just put the double question mark and the double question mark is going to do the same exact thing but it's also going to be able to provide us a value back so if this value is null right here what we can do is we can put a string return a string that says no value and not only do we get the same logic as above but we also get something returned back but we can't just stop there we can do something even better we can use what's called a ternary operator and a ternary operator is going to be able to provide us with even better logic so what i can do is i can say if value 2 is not null i can put one question mark and if it is true we can put is has value i think that's probably more appropriate has value and if it is not true we can do is do something like this we can say no value and that's pretty much it that will knock out all of your null reference error problems i know that there's probably a lot of people out there who are struggling with it but that's pretty much all you need anyways hope that you guys enjoyed this if you did make sure to smash that like button smash that subscribe button and as always thank you for watching